Hello, friends. This is Market Sound Theory Studio. Hope you're all having a great week so far. And uh, want to do a new video today. Um, this is Conquering Sweet Picking Once and For All Part 3. And uh, this will probably be the final video of this series. Uh, doesn't mean I won't do some sweet picking videos in the future, but uh, this should round out the basics really, really well. So you saw in the intro I was doing a uh, five string sweep, whereas in the first video we were doing three. So I want to kind of expose you to doing uh, sweep picking over more than the three strings. And I also want to talk a little bit about tapping with these uh, sweep picked arpeggios today as well, because it's a very common thing to do. So let's go ahead and just look at the, uh, the major chord uh, over five strings now instead of three. Now there's no particular reason I'm skipping four strings or not including six strings. Those are all completely valid. Um, but you know, the technique is really pretty much the same for all of them. You know, I would practice sweeping over three strings, possibly then four, then five, then maybe all six. Um, but you know, the technique really is exactly the same, which isn't to say that it's easy and once you have three strings down, you're good, because it, that's, that's not true. Sweeping over all these strings can feel a little different than just over three, but the technique, it really is exactly the same as in the previous videos that I described. So let's go ahead and look just at the structure first. So let's take the very first arpeggio we learned in uh, part one, which was the C major triad, right? All right, so if you wanna play that over five strings, I always try to incorporate some theory into my lessons. It's just, I think it's really important to know your theory. So the three notes of a C major chord are C, E, and G, okay? So that's what we're playing during that three string sweep. There's a G, there's the C, the root, E, back to G. C, E, G, E, C, G, over and over. Right? So, we're hitting the three uh, notes of a C major chord, gives us a C major arpeggio. Now, if you wanna add strings four and five to this arpeggio and make it a little wider, all you gotta do is add those notes. Anywhere you can find them really is fine. This is a very common shape. We're going to start on C, and this is on a string five, fret 15. So that's a C. Okay, and then your ring finger is gonna hit string four, fret 14, and I'll be putting tabs on the screen for, the, for this. So, started with a C, then to an E. Now we're back to where we started on that uh, pattern you already learned. There's the G, C, E, G. So, C major arpeggio over five strings instead of three. Very cool. And then go back, of course. All right, very good. Now, like I said, the technique for this is exactly the same, okay? So you're gonna go down with the pick, down, 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 up, pull off, up, up, up. And then for the last note, I usually come back over and hit that with a down because I'm gonna start over, assuming I'm gonna play that over and over and over. Uh, that last note will be with a down pick so I can start over again. So, down, 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 up, pull off, up, 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 down, 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 and so on, right? Very cool, so if you wanna figure out your minor arpeggio and your diminished arpeggio, it's just gonna be the same thing, right? Just think about your theory and ask yourself what notes are different and then find them on strings four and five. So let's go ahead and do a C minor arpeggio. So you remember from the previous videos, a minor chord has a flattened third in it. The third in the key of C is E, so we need to take that E and make it an E flat. And by the way, if that stuff is confusing to you and you don't really know what it means and you don't know how it works, I'm doing a uh, YouTube music theory lesson uh, series actually, and part one is already posted. Uh, part two will be coming soon. Not sure how many parts it's gonna be right now, but watching those will explain all of this and uh, you'll be in really good shape to understand it. So. C minor arpeggio, let's take those E's, make them E flats. So, let's go backward this time. So, oh, excuse me, whoops. There we go, G, there's the five, right? G, pull off to E flat, there's the C, G, okay? G, C, E flat, G. Okay, there's your C minor arpeggio. Let's go ahead and do that over five strings now. And we guys gotta ask ourselves, where is there a C, an E flat, or a G that we can get at? 
So we'll start on that same bass note as last time. That's the C string five uh, fret 15. Now instead of hitting this E, we need to make it an E flat, right? So change it to that. And then the top three strings you already know, right? So we just added string five fret 15, string four fret 13. There you go. Now you got a C minor arpeggio. There it is. All right, so the process for diminished is exactly the same, right? So for diminished, we have a flat three and a flat five. We have to turn the E's into E flats and the G's into G flats. All right. So there's G flat, there's E flat, there's the C, there's the G flat again. So we learned that last lesson, right? Okay, if we want to complete that over five strings, just add those notes, so. There's the E flat, back to C. All right, very cool, so there's your C diminished arpeggio. Now, I should tell you right off the bat, if you've watched any sweet picking or any ar anyone play arpeggios like this before, you might have noticed that there's You've seen other shapes than just what I've been doing, and there's a lot of shapes. You gotta think to yourself, the guitar, I mean, this fretboard, I mean, obviously, there's notes everywhere, right? So a C major triad, C, E, and G, there's so many ways you can get at those notes. You know, what I showed you is a very popular shape. There are other ways to do it. So, you know, you, got, you can actually make up some of your own, too. And just, you know, think about the fretboard. If you haven't memorized your fretboard yet, do it. It's really important. If you can identify where those notes are and, you know, do it in a way that's reachable, then you can make up all kinds of different ways to create these arpeggios. Some will involve sweet picking. Some might involve just alternate picking, right? So, very cool. All right. So, next thing I want to talk about, and, uh, of course, what you want to do is practice the heck out of that, right? Just like you did with the first ones. It's the same technique. You've got the technique down at this point, I'm assuming. Now it's just doing it over more than three strings. It shouldn't really feel any different because uh, the technique's exactly the same. It's just going to be a, maybe a little awkward at first. It's your first time doing it, perhaps. But, uh, you know, very quickly, it should feel right at home. Practice with a metronome. Make it perfect. Make sure you can hear all those notes ringing out really clearly. You don't want it to just be kind of a, a mess of notes that are just kind of strung together and you can't really hear each of them very well. And a lot of that's going to have to do with your muting technique and just making sure your hands are synced perfectly. And the only way to do that is to start slow and then speed up, right? All right, cool. So now let's talk about tapping onto these arpeggios, because like I said, that's a very, very popular thing to do. If you're into, you know, especially heavy metal these days, Malmsteen, you know, all kinds of different people, you'll see these arpeggios with tapping added to them. So let's just talk about why. It's really a very simple uh, idea. There, you know, I mean, it's, it's difficult to do perhaps, but it's a very simple idea. So let's take this C major arpeggio over five strings. Okay. Now once I get to the high note there, which is the pinky, it's on a G, I can then take my right hand and tap on another note that would be compatible with that chord. So again, we're getting back to theory here. So if you need to brush up on your theory, please do so. Check out that YouTube series I'm working on. So let's assume the C chord is the one chord. Uh, it's, you know, we're in the key of C major, C Ionian to be specific. And uh, we just want to tap some extensions onto this chord and make it sound really interesting. Well, the obvious thing we can do is just add a C at the end and just hit that one again. That's, you know, that's like the, uh, maybe the most boring thing you can do, but it's, it still sounds pretty cool though, so. There's a C I just tapped, right? That's a little tricky because you have to think to yourself, now I'm sweeping with the pick, when I get up to to the top string, string one, I'm hammering on to 15, tapping that C, pull off, pull off, take those two pull offs, because you, you, you've bought yourself a little bit of time there doing those two pull offs to get your pick back in place, to come back up, right? So that's kind of the key to that, and again, just start really slow and just do it until it sounds perfect really slow and then speed it up. But let's, add, let's talk about adding some extensions that are a little more interesting than that. So assuming we're in the key of 
C Ionian, and we're playing a C major arpeggio. What notes do we have available to us to tap onto? Well, you could really use any of the seven notes that lie within that key, and it'll sound really cool. So that key consists of C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. All right. So let's try tapping all of those one way or the other. So there's A. That sounds really cool. So the A is the sixth note of the scale. So we just added the A. Okay, now let's try adding the, uh, the major seven, which is B, right? I really like the sound of that. So now you're kind of tapping like a C major seventh chord by adding that seven in there. Okay, so now let's try a D, okay? So where can we get at a D? So there's be one way up there, right? That sounds pretty cool too. Okay, next up is E. That's already in the arpeggio. That's the third, right? So let's add an F. Now I think this is gonna sound really cool. Now this one is a little different. You don't really have to tap the F here because there's an F on string one, fret 13, because you're already hitting fret 12 for the E and fret 15 for the G. Well, the F just lies right in between there, so just use your middle finger to hammer onto it. So this won't be a right-handed tap. I like that one a lot. I think that one sounds really cool. So now we're adding the fourth, right? So. That one I think is really cool. All right, next is the G. We've already added the G because the G is in the arpeggio itself. It's note five. And then we're back to the A, which is note six, and we already did that one. So now, basically those are your options, but you need to know your theory because if we're in C Lydian, you know, you're gonna make that F and F sharp. And again, if that doesn't mean much to you, check out the uh, theory video. But um, you know, you, you need to be always aware of your, your key, your mode, and everything else so that you understand what extensions are going to harmonize well with the chord progression. But assuming it's just C major, those are some really good ones to add. Now, another thing you can do, let's add that F in there, and then let's hammer on, say, to the A. So the F is the four. We're gonna add that with the middle finger, right? Then let's tap the A, which is the six. So. Very cool. So the more notes you can add to these arpeggios, you get these extended chord sounds that are really kind of exotic sounding, and uh, you, you, know, you just don't really hear them very often, and it makes your playing just sound so much more melodic and beautiful than just playing a bunch of triads over and over. I think it's really, uh, really beneficial to, to add these extensions when you can, especially in your sweep picking. You know, why not make it sound more intricate, more musical if you can, and it's really so easy to do. You know, just adding this one extra note, why not do it? Um, of course, it depends on the song, but... So anyway, obviously there is so much more we could talk about with sweep picking. Um, like I said, there's all the different shapes. There's hammer-ons, you know, during your ascending. Right, there's so many things you can do to really jazz these up. You're gonna need to study it, you're gonna need to look up, you know, all kinds of different shapes. See if you can find them on your own too, which I think is a great exercise. Think about these extensions and adding them in all kinds of different places. You don't have to always tap onto them, there's many options there. And uh, have fun with it and try to add these into songs and into your improvisation, and I think you'll have really nice results from it. Um, last thing I'll say about the sweep picking is uh, just make sure that you're doing it cleanly. I know I said that in the last videos, I don't mean to be a broken record. But if you, I, I think the main thing that people do that really messes up their progress in sweep picking is they rush it because I think maybe they're just really excited to get to the end result of being able to do it you know, really fast. And so what happens is they allow themselves to be kind of sloppy to get there faster in the hopes that, I don't know, maybe, maybe no one will notice or whatever. And uh, you don't, you don't want to do that because when you do it correctly, it kind of sounds like someone playing a keyboard, right? These really long arpeggios. Whereas if you play it sloppy, which most of you I'm sure have heard someone do that, it just kind of sounds like a mess of muted notes. It doesn't really sound like an arpeggio anymore and you, you don't want that. So make sure and take your time with it. And as always, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, just let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Like always, these YouTube videos there's only so much you can be taught, 
uh, in these videos. You know, these, you know, sometimes I'll do like a half hour video, a 40 minute video. I really highly recommend you get a guitar teacher if you're really interested in learning these kinds of things. You, there's definitely a lot to learn from YouTube videos, don't get me wrong. If I didn't feel that way, I wouldn't even do them. But you really need someone to help you, you know, in person, I believe, or at least, you know, through some sort of video that you can speak back and forth with. So for that reason, think about getting a guitar teacher if you don't already have one. It's really beneficial. It's going to shave possibly years off of your progress. Um, you know, you'll get to your goals way faster if you have a guide. And it's really nice to have that guide. And speaking of which, on my website, you can get my book on uh, music theory. And if some of the things I said didn't make much sense to you about these arpeggios and extensions, the book will really help you out. It's a very cheap price. It's an instant download. You can get it right now and start reading. Um, I'm pretty proud of the book. I spent a long time on it. And uh, go to www.soundtheorystudio.com and you can pick that up in the store there. Like I said, instant download. You can get it right now. And I think you'll enjoy it, and uh, it'll help you understand a lot of this. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for everything. Really appreciate it. You guys have been great. Getting more subscribers and more views lately, that's awesome. Um, you know, if these videos help you out, that means a lot to me. That's really all I care about. So if it helps you out, great. That makes me happy. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for everything. Peace. I'll see you later.